IntelliSense, I have a love-hate relationship with it. You have to be careful with it. And I do disable it, especially on really large scripts. And I'll, I'll tell you why. But I do like using it sometimes. You can easily turn IntelliSense on and off. There is a button to do this right up here. It's this button with the highlighting around it. And it says, hey, control Q followed by control I will toggle IntelliSense on and off. Whenever you see a comma like this in the middle of a shortcut command, that is what's known as a chord. This is our first shortcut chord. So we're gonna turn IntelliSense off. It's on right now. I'm gonna hit control Q. And notice here in the bottom of the screen, it lets me know that there's something interesting going on. It says, hey, you've pressed the beginning of a chord. A lot of our chords start in control Q. So the second part of this one is control I. And I think of this as control quacky IntelliSense. So I'm gonna go ahead and do control I. That's the second part of the chord and the little highlight on this icon went off when I did that. So you can use the button. I like using the keyboard and I like doing that chord. I'm gonna turn it back on. I just did control Q. And now with control I, IntelliSense is back on for my session. It will correct case. So I have capital M and capital A. Let's say I type an S and it says, it, I'm gonna suggest the master database. Well, that's great, let's go for it. So I'm gonna hit tab to autocomplete the name and it actually does correct my capitalization. And this is, one of the things I love about IntelliSense is it's great with things like tricky capitalization and things that are hard to get right. And if my script is run on someone else's case sensitive instance, I certainly want it to run, which is why I make my test instances case sensitive. So that's really cool. I can also arrow down through my IntelliSense suggestions. So let's say I want sys.database file. So this says sys.dat, I'm gonna type A. And now I've got a list of suggestions. The down and up arrows let me navigate between them. I'm gonna hit tab to uh, select database files and then go ahead and run my query, make sure it works and it does. I'm gonna do uh, control Z to undo that and just leave my script in the ready to play mode so you can play along too. One of the most confusing things though about IntelliSense is completion mode versus suggestion mode. And it's actually fairly easy once you know what to look for to tell the difference between these two. What you're gonna look for is whether or not a suggestion is fully highlighted or if it is just outline. So here we are back at sys.dat. Let's say I want to type the name of something that doesn't exist, but there are things that are named similarly. And maybe it is something that IntelliSense just doesn't know about. Maybe it's in a different database context. Maybe it's something I want to create in the future. Who knows what it is? But let's say I want to type sys.database just one word, and this actually doesn't exist. There is no sys.database, but I wanna type it. Well, okay, sys.dat, I type A. I am currently in suggestion mode. See how data spaces just has an outline? Suggestion mode, it's showing me suggestions, but it isn't committing me to them. And in suggestion mode, I can type sys.d-a-t-a-b-a-s-e, and then just hit spacebar. I had suggestions, but it didn't force me into them. And I like suggestion mode a lot, but you may default to or actually be in completion mode, which acts different. And I personally don't like it as much. We can toggle between suggestion mode and completion mode with control, alt, spacebar. So I have to do control, I have to do alt, and I have to do spacebar. There is a menu option for this too, but in shortcuts, it's control alt space bar. And in suggestion mode now, or sorry, in completion mode, this is completion mode, I have a blue box, not just an outline. So now that I'm in completion mode, I'm gonna type sys.database, this thing that doesn't exist, 
And since that is highlighted, something's always highlighted in completion mode, if I hit space, ah, it completed it for me. Sure, I can undo it with control Z, but if you're running and if you're running in a pattern where you are running into this a lot and IntelliSense keeps completing something you don't want it to complete, you might be happier in suggestion mode. Sometimes I get frustrated with it because all of these red underlined squiggles, right? Like, oh, it just makes everything look so wrong. Well, this looks wrong for a reason. I can refresh my cache all I want, and you can use Control Shift R to tell IntelliSense, hey, go refresh your knowledge of what the objects are. But the thing is, right here, I have a use master. IntelliSense understands that. And what it's doing is it's looking for this table and it says, hey, that's not in the master database. It is totally right to have that underlined in red. It's also not in the Babby names database. This table is in the wide world importers database. So if I tell it now the correct database context, bam, the behind the scenes after I changed the database context, a separate thread for IntelliSense went out and refreshed and said, hey, that, that is there. I see that object. Yeah, that table does have those columns. I didn't even have to hit Control Shift R to refresh the cache. It just did it automatically. Sometimes it doesn't do it as fast as you want. And that's fair. This is a background you know, process. We don't, we don't want maybe our IntelliSense thread having top priority, right? So I'm going to switch this back the other database and I'll hit control shift R. I think it may have beat me to it and said, hey, that doesn't exist there. One of the weird things about this separate thread for IntelliSense though is it can look kind of funny and it can mislead you at very critical times. So it's good to know that that separate thread doesn't always work. There's a special session in management, not in management studio, there's a special session in SQL Server called the dedicated admin connection. A lot of people call this the DAC. And the term DAC actually means multiple things in SQL Server, but the one it mainly means is the dedicated admin connection. SQL Server keeps memory available and a little bit of CPU so that if your system's under high pressure, it's like the reserved entry where you can get in and you have a few reserved resources so that you can see what is going on in the SQL Server. Even if everything else is under a ton of memory pressure and there isn't much CPU available, you can run a few queries on the dedicated admin connection. Only admins can use it. Only one thread can use it as a time. So you only want to use this periodically and you don't want to, you know, like hog the, the DAC. But you also want to know that there's this weird error that can show up when you connect to it, which is a false alarm. So what I'm going to do is connect to the DAC. So I'm going to hit Alt to go up to that menu at the top. And I'm going to hit Q to go to the query menu. I'm going to type C to expand connection and now H to change connection. This is suggesting that I connect to my instance, which is named Faster01. But I want to connect to the DAC, so I'm going to type admin and then colon. I want to connect to the dedicated admin session on Faster01. And when I click connect, hey, the first thing I see is a big old error message that says I couldn't connect to the DAC. And this makes it look like this failed and that it, maybe somebody else is using it. Oh no, what's going on? I hope, I hope I can get in. Well, before you freak out, look down at the bottom of your screen because it looks like after all, I am connected to the DAC and I am. My session connected and then IntelliSense tried to connect right after me. This error is actually for the IntelliSense thread. I can prove with this query that looks at sys.dmexec session as well as sys.endpoints that the session ID connected to the dedicated admin connection, session ID 69, and in fact, my session ID 69. 
It's just that IntelliSense couldn't connect after me and IntelliSense isn't going to work in my session while I'm connected to the DAC either. Whether or not that little button for it is highlighted, it just doesn't have a thread. I have had some cases and I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt and uh, change out of this while I describe this. I have had some cases where Management Studio seemed to be driving up my CPU. Like, and, and I often would notice this by like hearing the fans on my laptop kick on. I look and I say, who's using all the CPU? And I see that it's Management Studio. In those cases in Management Studio, I was often working on a really large script. And when I toggled IntelliSense off, which you can do with Control Q and then Control I, Shortly after I did that, my CPU usage dropped way down. So because of situations like that, when I'm editing large scripts, I prefer to not have IntelliSense on. And really, I always prefer if I'm editing a large script to not be doing it against production, right? So you got to be careful out there. It is a great tool, but use the force wisely and know that it's not currently available in every situation. You can't use it right now against Azure SQL database, but you can vote on this connect item if you think you, you should be able to. And I, I hope it's coming because I do think that IntelliSense is a valuable tool, especially if you're like me and you don't like to capitalize everything yourself. <laughs>